And uh, the very first campaign, in fact, that uh, Mark launched while Freedom Party was in existence was the No Tax for Pan Am campaign. Athletes from South, Central and North America show their stuff at the Pan Am Games. They're considered a tune-up for the Olympics, a good practice run for the main event. But in London, Ontario, they're considered a gold mine. London is Canada's official choice as a site for the 1991 Games. And for the boosters, they're a dream come true. Something to put London on the map. But there are others who think that putting London on the map might break the bank. First, the committee's pitch. The small, mainly supportive audience was told it was taking a cautious, fiscally responsible approach. For $98 million, London could host the Games, a cultural festival, and a sports science symposium, and get an aquatic center, a stadium, a field house, lots of jobs, and a host of emotional intangibles. We think this is a marvelously exciting, wonderful opportunity for London. I think it's, it's the, the staging of a whole new era of development for our city. Gordon Hume sells a sizzle of the Pan Am Games. Today's audience is the London Chamber of Commerce, and they like his pitch. Hume is chairman of the bid committee, the group trying to bring the games to London. Hume also has a little fun speculating on the challenge that may come from Havana, Cuba. Now I have this vision down there, Fidel Castro and I dressed in green fatigues having a, a, a smoke <laughs> off down there. <laughs> Gordon Hume is a man who usually wins. Four years ago, he took London by storm and has turned CKSL into the city's number one radio station. I have always been appalled by the sense and the satisfaction with mediocrity that permeates some of Canadian society. I have never been one to accept that. Hume and the bid committee want 10 million from the city for the games, but the big money must come from yeah. Ottawa and Queen's yeah. Park. 60 million dollars in government lottery money. This used bookstore in downtown London is a hotbed of Pan Am descent. It belongs to Mark Emery, a local crusader who's at the thick of most controversies. He's also spent about $12,000 printing his own newspaper. Basically, it's just sort of, you might say a manifesto of the things I believe in, but it, it dealt with a lot of issues, hate literature, abortion, uh, pensions, anything controversial is in here. Now Mark Emery wants to bring his talents to a fight with Gordon Hume and the forces of progress. With us today on my left is Mark Emery. And beside Mark is Bob Mitz. Mark, what is your campaign all about? Stan, what we're doing, a uh, number of volunteers from the various areas of the city and myself uh, are delivering this brochure to all the homes in the city, 68,000 homes pretty well. That's pretty well every taxpayer and a good proportion of the entire population. This brochure outlines our various objections, not to the games themselves, but to the use of tax money for the games and the facilities that come with the games. Uh, what we encourage people to do is uh, remit this card in here, and that gives us their support, and it also gives us an idea of whether they'd like to help us, since our campaign is a grassroots one made up of Londoners working for their own city, working for their own benefit in the future. It's the kind of thing that we like to get people involved in, and we can sure use the help. Emery hits the streets every day, delivering his condemnation of the games. It cost Emery $600 to print the flyer that he's handing out to 20,000 Londoners. Emery says he's just trying to make people aware that there are better ways to spend their tax dollars. What I believe to be the common feeling in the community is that we sh the city government should be concerned with our streets, our roads, our buses, and... Uh, not even our buses, really, but I mean our streets, sidewalks, sewers, this sort of thing, and not on job creation programs, social welfare programs, programs that are designed to stimulate the economy, when in my opinion all they're doing is taking money away from our, out of our pockets. Mr. Emery is with us this morning. How's it going? You've been distributing the flyers. What's the re reaction? The reaction then? to me personally has been just wonderful. We, I've gotten over about 150 calls on the phone encouraging me to keep going and uh, people giving their various reasons why they're opposed. And we've had uh, 28 letters in the free press in the last month opposing the Pan Am Games. And there's only been three in favor. And one of them was signed by 26 people. And uh, So you think most of the citizens are against oh, this? Oh, I, I believe that the free press survey they did was very fair. And it found that 85% of the people in the city were opposed to paying for the games. And on a CFPL open line poll, 75% were opposed to paying for the games through taxes. Uh, it shouldn't be confused with the fact that 
I'm not against the games. I'm, I'm only against taxpayers subsidizing them. If, if the city could run them, or if the Pan Am Games Committee could run them like the Olympics were run, totally privately funded, then I would be most willing to help them out in that venture. But when it comes to taking money from people by force, without any consent of their own, then I'm definitely opposed to that. You say that people are, are supporting you, but are people supporting you enough to uh, back you uh, with more than just saying we're against the game? So it seems like a one-man campaign that you're well, on your it, own. Well, it is largely a one-man campaign, but we did get 15 people to volunteer to distribute the pamphlets. Uh, I was only able to do, even day after day, 3,000 in a period of two weeks, and we did deliver 20,000. Bob, what is your Freedom Party and your involvement in this? Well, I'm president of the Freedom Party of Ontario, which is a fully registered political party of the province of Ontario. And as president of a freedom of choice party, naturally I'm interested in, in the taxpayer having the greatest degree of choice possible in determining where his tax dollar will be put. For that reason, we've supported Mark Emery and his campaign. We offer all the technical assistance, uh, the volunteers, the computer services, layout boards, things of that nature that make a campaign like this possible. Emery's dreams are based on the philosophy of the Freedom Party, a radical right-wing political group. The party helps him deliver his pamphlets. I hope we'll get this done in a month, we'll have 45,000 delivered, so it'll just leave about 50,000 more to go. The message here is that governments pillage taxpayers, especially when they use taxes for sports events. It's an extreme view, but Emery thinks 70% of London supports him. And I see no harm City controller Joan Smith agrees that Emery's sewer crusade may be getting through. I'm going door to door ten times a week, and I'm running consistently into this sense of we don't want the Pan Am Games. Emery's campaign was a top news item on every radio station, you know, in the London area. Evening TV coverage also accompanied uh, the event. The whole campaign, it generated editorial cartoons in the paper, and Mark reprinted his. He would hire editorial cartoonists and do his own. Uh, we, had, we put out a newsletter, Mark and I together, called uh, No Tax for Pan Am, and it actually got 1,100 subscribers and supporters within weeks. The debate over the Pan Am Games, um, it was packed, the gallery was packed with opponents uh, to the PCB removal plan and opponents to the Pan Am Games, and as you can see, you're going to be seeing signs in a few seconds. People held up signs for hours saying things like, you fix the sidewalks and sewers and let the athletes pay for the games. The bid committee announced at a public meeting it was cutting back its stadium proposal in order to hold down total game costs. They're still estimated at about $88 million, far below the Hamilton bid at 125, but they're now easier to achieve because many of the facilities including the stadium, will use temporary seating. The decision comes as a campaign to scuttle the game's bid has started to go citywide. Thousands of leaflets have been distributed by more than 20 volunteers who've received hundreds of dollars in donations. Well, we're saying that this is an inappropriate use of uh, taxpayers' resources. They shouldn't be forced to uh, subsidize other people's lifestyles, and athletics is a lifestyle. Although the Pan Am Bid Committee might be loath to admit it, the scaling down of its proposals may in part be an answer to critics like Mark Emery, who fear a continuing burden on London taxpayers. And what this is, is the Pan Am Games sets a precedent for the City Council to embark on many, many huge costly ventures, of which they, this one is only the beginning. So that's $200 for starters. But what you're paying for in that taxes is not just the Pan Am Games, you're, you're buying a philosophy of massive government intervention. So we have to move ahead and we will, and the Pan Am Games is simply one of many steps the city will take in the next 10 and 20 years. Having been one of the politicians to whom Emery's postcards were addressed, the Minister of Fitness and Amateur Sport responded by imposing a five-year freeze on financing for international sport events in Canada. Hume and the bid committee were outraged. We are not quitters and therefore we are not prepared to quit on this at this time. We are going to request an immediate meeting with Mr. Jelinek we are going to request a meeting with the Ontario government officials. I would expect that there should have been some advance warning and some advance information so that uh, at least we could have had an opportunity of presenting our case. The bid committee has a lot of time to go and get that money through lotteries and private sponsorships. I think it's still possible and I, I've offered to help. They've got a thousand dollar pledge from me already, should that be the case. Within uh, about a year's time, we managed to lobby three levels of government and, and uh, halt the spending of 110 million tax dollars on London's hosting the 1991 
Pan Am Games. Emory, Freedom Party, and the No Tax for Pan Am Games Committee had defeated the Pan Am Games bid. The games were ultimately held in Cuba. In fact, there were a lot of issues that Mark uh, really was working hard to gain the confidence of, I guess you would say, the electorate. Uh, one of the most dramatic things he did, I think, was during London's last garbage strike. London's outside workers are on strike. Deputy Mayor Jack Burkhardt says that for at least the next two weeks, Londoners should store their garbage in airtight plastic bags. Middlesex County is warning Londoners who dump their garbage on rural roads during the strike, once it does get started, will be charged with littering, which carries a $53 fine. The inside workers refused to cross their outside counterparts picket line at City Hall this morning. The strike has forced the city to store sewage sludge outside the Greenway plant rather than burn it, and the odor is similar to standing beside a field of manure. And the first person we talked to is Gilles LaBelle, the assistant regional director of QP4 Ontario. He's one of the big guns that have been brought in to handle the situation in London. If, if you had 30 seconds here to, to, to really hit home to the people of London, because that's who you're talking to, Mr. LaBelle, what, what would you tell them? Well, all, uh, uh, all I can say to the uh, citizens of the uh, city of uh, London is that... Uh, you know, we're sorry for the inconvenience. However, you see, we have an interest to protect here. That's all that the union wants, is a monopoly on, on the municipal services that we can get. They do not want the taxpayer to have a choice. When they go on strike, what they have is a legal right to prevent some other guy down the street who's unemployed or working for another company or something from offering us the same service. And I look at myself as a taxpayer. And if this person does not want to offer me a service on terms that are agreeable to both of us, then people who cannot agree in a free society have a right to go their separate ways. I think that if we give them what, we, what they want today, all that means is when the next contract expires, they can hold us hostage again. We've got to end this process. While the city's garbage collectors continue to man picket lines, preparations are underway at the Freedom Party headquarters downtown for the start of a free garbage collection program tomorrow. It may be another 10 days or so before the city opens alternate sites where Londoners can take their garbage during the current strike. Meantime, businessman Mark Emery is using the strike to gain some recognition for his Freedom Party. News 98's Don Ambrose has details. Right on the steps of City Hall this morning, Emery announced plans to collect garbage in certain areas of East and Northeast London. He intends to start on Tuesday with one truck and a group of volunteers. Mark Emery of the Freedom Party held a brief news conference on his plans to collect garbage for lower income people and senior citizens. He expects to do three blocks a day starting Tuesday. Some strikers then confronted him on the issue. They say we don't take it over to your house. Right. City. Oh, well, you why don't you tell us what streets are you going to pick it up and we'll take the garbage over there. there. Right over there. The phone. Look, if that's the kind of attitude you have to dealing with the problems of a certain people who won't be able to cope, then I say bring it to my house. Dump it on my front line. That's what's going to make you guys feel better. But I'm telling you, that's not going to be very sympathetic to the people of London. I don't think they're going to appreciate a gesture of that kind. Murray says hauling garbage without a ministry certificate is subject to a maximum fine of $5,000. He says London businessman Mark Emery, who started hauling garbage earlier this week, doesn't have a certificate either and faces possible court action. The Freedom Party was collecting garbage from residents who were left notices yesterday. Not everyone set their trash on the boulevard, but when the truck arrived, the garbage appeared. For organizer Mark Emery, it was a constructive form of political statement. This is what we thought of as a, mo a constructive protest. It's a way of saying, listen, we don't feel that we should be blackmailed either by the city or by the union or by anybody about essential services. And yet rather than, you know, take petitions or protest or picket or something like that, we thought what a better, what more constructive way of going about it than picking up people's garbage and showing that they don't have to say, well, we surrender, you know, we're going to let our city look terrible, let it become unsafe and unhealthy, so we're going to do our bit to at least keep this neighborhood as clean as possible. The system is not as sophisticated as the city's, and you can't read a schedule to see when the pickup will be. People seem satisfied that the garbage was gone, although a few refuse to cooperate because they support the striking outside city workers. The service costs Emory and the Freedom Party $60 for the truck each day and $100 to empty a full truck at a landfill site outside the city. But Emory says the cost is worth it in order to make a point.
Scott Burton, TV London News. And he generated coast-to-coast -coast publicity for us because of that campaign. And it was such a positive community effort. Um, we got calls from all kinds of senior citizens, people who were, uh, you know, trapped in their homes because they were handicapped or things like this. That was the thing, you know, when you're on the right side, you've always got the public on your side, even though they feel helpless with the union and stuff like that. But emotionally and, and spiritually, they're there. And the union guys always come across looking like thugs, as long as somebody's there to point it out. People called me up every day and threatened there was battery acid and garbage one day, a bomb in it the next, and I said, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> and nothing, none of that happened. I delivered, I picked up garbage for a month. I had a good time, and believe me, if you can have a good time picking up garbage all day long, you're a happy sort of fellow. But the thing is, I knew I was doing something concrete and real. I, one person, posed a real threat to a whole city paralyzed strike by doing something. 